My name is Alice. I recently celebrated a significant milestone in my life, turning 60 years old. At this age, I find myself reflecting on various events from the past more frequently. It's often said that life has its ups and downs, but if I were asked when the most challenging period of my life was, I wouldn't hesitate to mention the time my marriage faced a significant trial. This was about 30 years ago when I was 30 and my husband was 36, and we had just welcomed our adorable newborn daughter. As for my in-laws, I had the impression that they were quite the characters. They took great pride in their lineage, often boasting about their family history. And, what they always conclude their bragging with is. You should have a boy. Hearing this over and over, I was beyond tired of it. I desperately wanted to be free from the pressure to quickly produce an heir. In response to my exasperation with the in-laws' interference, my husband said. Well, my parents mean no harm. Please, try to forgive them a bit. My husband generally sided with defending his parents' actions. Since these kinds of remarks were mostly directed at me, my husband didn't feel the direct discomfort. To him, it was completely someone else's problem. I harbored deep dissatisfaction with this stance. Despite enduring years of frustration, I reached my breaking point. It happened when we went to introduce our daughter to my in-laws after her birth. A girl. He muttered under his breath. Even as I stood there dumbfounded, my husband casually remarked. They're just old-fashioned, you know. I wanted to praise myself for not exploding in anger right then and there. However, seeing my anger, my husband casually said. Can't you just let this slide? Be more mature about it. That moment was probably when I felt the most irritated ever. One day, I decided to speak my mind to my husband. If you leave me alone again when we visit your parents, I won't ever go back there. I've tried to compromise, to avoid conflict with your father and mother during wedding preparations and when they interfered with our new home. But I can't take it anymore. Even if there's no ill will, it doesn't change the fact that it's bothersome. So please stop. I'm not a magic lamp here to fulfill your parents' wishes. I intended to convey this with a strong tone, but it seemed to have no effect. Family lineage is such an outdated concept these days. But you know, my family does have a decent lineage. What? I was dumbfounded by my husband's completely irrelevant response, left speechless. Meanwhile, my husband cheerfully went to fill the bathtub with water. At that moment, I suddenly thought, Frustration with my husband's off-target responses grew, feeling the gravity of his naivety, to the point where malicious intent seemed preferable. Was he simply naive, or was there a deliberate attempt to confuse and deflect the conversation? Considering this made me somewhat accept the situation. I even pondered if he might be suffering from some illness, though I couldn't pinpoint what it could be. Realistically, the chances of illness are slim. The ongoing situation brings an ominous feeling of an inevitable major conflict approaching. Under these circumstances, I see little chance of enduring mentally. Though a conflict might at least offer a glimpse of resolution, my deep anxiety comes from my husband's failure to understand the true cause of my anger. This anxiety felt almost like certainty. For the next three days, I tried ignoring my husband whenever he spoke to me, but it seemed to make no difference. Is it really something to be so angry about? He wondered, tilting his head in confusion. This only added to my irritation, coupled with a sense of emptiness about what I was doing. Why does my husband treat my feelings as if they were someone else's problem? I deeply pondered how to make this incomprehensible husband understand my true feelings. I should have gone back to my parents' house, even if it meant kicking the table over when my father-in-law said, oh, a girl. 
I should have shown clear anger and returned to my parents' house instead of letting my husband downplay the incident. My attempt to avoid conflict was naive, and I now painfully realize this. And yet, I realized it's not too late to take action. With renewed determination, I prepared to leave home. By this time tomorrow, I will have arrived at my parents' house. The journey home is long, so I decided to visit a close friend, stay at their place for the night. I sent an email to my husband expressing my feelings clearly. Recent events have made it clear how you regard our family. From now on, I prefer to communicate through a third party. I will inform you of their contact details later. If you wish to involve a third party, please arrange for it. Right after sending the email, I received a reply from my husband. Can you wait until I get home? I want to talk face to face, calmly. But I had no hope for direct communication with my husband anymore. The behavior of my husband, which seemed natural to him, was a major reason why dialogue was impossible. The next day, my in-laws were planning to visit my parents' house. Despite my husband should have been the one to address this issue, why involve the in-laws? I couldn't hide my disappointment in my husband still depending on his parents in this situation. So, the third party you chose was your parents. Your parents have directly thrown their anger at my parents' house. Even in such a situation, it's clear you understand nothing. I hoped you would calm down and think, but seeing your response, that hope seems slim. I will wait and communicate through a lawyer from now on. No, that's a complete misunderstanding. In fact, my parents are aware they have been harsh on you, and if this continues, it might lead to divorce. That's why I only told them not to say anything to you. There was never an intention to mend things through a third party. You really don't understand at all. My anger is actually directed at you. I can't stand how you belittle my problems and always defend your parents. Just like you told me to let words slide off, you've been ignoring mine too. Based on your parents being angry, you should have some idea of why they're coming, right? My mother, considering how upset I was, relayed the in-laws' words to me in a roundabout, gentle manner. However, the true content my father-in-law inadvertently mentioned was incredibly harsh, making me feel sick. We could forgive if it was a boy, but to have a girl and then act so haughtily against us. We've been patient because she's the wife of our eldest son, but such a disgrace is unforgivable. And our son is saying it's our fault this happened. It seems my in-laws accused me of being pleased with breaking their family bond. And the in-laws are saying they will come to take my daughter back tomorrow. Despite saying they didn't need a girl, their true intentions are unclear. Amidst this, I received a reply email from my husband. If you go back to your parents, we lose the chance to talk it out. Let's meet face to face and talk again. Are you planning to just ignore my words again, or try to persuade me? I won't fall for that approach anymore. I hadn't told my parents about this series of events, so they were both deeply shocked and furious upon hearing them for the first time. They appeared calm on the surface, but they told me it was a strategic attitude to probe the real intentions of the other party. To prepare for this situation, my brother had discreetly arranged for an IC recorder. Additionally, he had urgently consulted a person who was his classmate and is now a practicing lawyer. With the sudden news of the in-law's visit, a meeting with the lawyer was arranged for the next morning to discuss the emergency. Arrangements were made for the lawyer to also be present during the meeting with the in-laws. The next morning, I hurried to my parents' house. When the in-laws arrived as promised, they were surprised and at a loss for words to find the lawyer already waiting. They attempted to dismiss and deny everything they had been accused of. Do you really believe we said such things? It's unforgivable to make up such baseless stories and paint us as the villains. 
Please, don't be misled by her words. This woman. They desperately tried to defend themselves. During this exchange, the lawyer carefully presented the emails exchanged between my husband and me to the in-laws. The emails detailed the accusations from the in-laws with my husband present, how emotionally hurt I was, and how my husband tried to justify his parents' actions. Faced with these facts, the in-laws were lost for words. Why is your son defending statements you claim not to have made? Well, as our son mentioned, we didn't mean any harm. The in-laws tried various excuses. But in front of the lawyer, they couldn't do anything and left showing various expressions of anger and sadness. Of course, I am protecting my daughter. My husband was supposed to visit the next day for a discussion with the entire family and the lawyer. As planned, my husband arrived the next day with the in-laws. The in-laws showed a strong desire to take my daughter. Do you think it's legally acceptable for grandparents to claim custody when both parents are alive and there are no issues with the child's upbringing? That's not possible. They faced a firm rebuttal. However, the in-laws couldn't hide their obsession with my daughter. Then, we will have our son take her. It should be fine if our son takes her, right? That's okay, isn't it? He tried to ingratiate himself with the lawyer with a sycophantic smile. You may have forgotten, but there was a statement made about not needing a girl. That was just the ramblings of a senile old man. He attempted to elicit sympathy with his excuse. Have you ever considered how such ramblings could potentially harm a young child's psyche? What? They showed a dumbfounded reaction. The lawyer discussed the serious implications, including how it could damage self-esteem or lead to self-blame in children. Are you really unaware of these basic facts? No matter what rights you believe you have, the law will never grant you custody if it's not in the best interest of the child. He stressed this point, also directing it at my husband. Accepting your parents' outdated thinking as merely old-fashioned complicity is akin to abuse. That's absurd. To call it abuse is an exaggeration. In today's society, your way of thinking is utterly unacceptable. That is what society does not condone. Despite a somewhat softer approach than before, the in-laws' stubbornness remained, unwilling to bend their stance. They claimed to have no recollection of such ill intentions and were adamant about not paying alimony if a divorce was desired. They blamed my overly sensitive nature for the problem, arguing that a son defending his parents is natural and questioned why that was an issue. They criticized me for not fitting into family traditions, calling me neurotic and paranoid, thus unfit as a mother. They insisted that it would be better for the child if my husband took custody. Their claims were baffling, reflecting a mindset difficult to comprehend in today's changing world. Adapting to such outdated family values is clearly impossible. Why can't these older generations adapt to the times? Please, don't embarrass yourself. What era are you living in? Everyone has their own values, and it's fine to have them. But expressing those views publicly can clash with others. Especially your outdated beliefs, which will hardly find sympathy today. If you're unaware that your values are out of date, that shows a remarkable ignorance. And about pride in your lineage, hardly anyone knows or cares about it outside your circle. It would not be missed if it ended. It's not something to boast about. It only leads to embarrassment, and if you had any shame, you wouldn't be in this humiliating situation. Enraged, the in-laws vehemently disagreed. In their excitement, it was hard to understand what they were saying, making their words difficult to comprehend. Their enraged faces, wide-eyed and wrinkled, shouting with spittle flying, seemed like something out of a zombie movie. You are a woman. Show some respect to your elders. That much was crystal clear to hear. 
If you desire respectful treatment, perhaps you should adopt a bit more humanity that fits with the modern age? Never in my life have I felt such contempt for anyone. The in-laws' fury escalated further, and their uproar became unbearably loud. Amidst this, I watched their meaningless words with a detached, cold gaze. Continuing this argument with your parents will lead to no resolution. Alice is primarily your partner, and as a couple, your mutual decisions should be respected. It's crucial for both of you to discuss and deepen your understanding about the future path of your marriage and this complex issue. We will proceed with a conversation with your husband. While we allow the presence of your parents, we ask them to remain quiet and refrain from unnecessary comments. He stated solemnly. Then, my husband began to speak his truth. I acknowledge my parents' inappropriate behavior. I've always tried to avoid criticizing my wife and creating uncomfortable situations. I wanted to be acknowledged by my parents for choosing a good wife, but I regret that desire was mistaken. If given another chance, I wish to reassess and improve my relationship with Alice. During this serious conversation, the father-in-law inappropriately interjected. What are you saying? Defending such an impatient wife. Just be quiet. Listen to me. He forcefully silenced him. The in-laws were speechless, and I was internally surprised to see my husband not swayed by his parents' opinions and clearly stating his stance. Seeing my husband assert himself more than before against his parents, I wished he had found that courage sooner. Please listen carefully, everyone. This situation can be likened to a traffic accident. Regardless of intentions, your parents must fulfill their responsibilities for the consequences of their words and actions. Additionally, the husband must also bear appropriate responsibility for neglecting this serious issue and further exacerbating the situation. He pointed out clearly. As planned in detail with the lawyer, if my husband wished to continue our marriage, I conveyed the conditions I required from him myself. To completely cut ties with his family. The submission of the already signed divorce papers. The provision of a heartfelt apology letter. And moving to a new residence. I considered these four conditions as the final opportunity for agreement and pleaded desperately with my husband. Your parents' disregard for our child's life, their grandchild, is clear evidence that you have not received proper respect from them. Facing this fact and accepting reality is demanded of you. Even so, cutting ties with such unreasonable parents will undoubtedly require a significant amount of effort and mental strength. Therefore, I can understand why you've avoided confronting them directly, maintaining a semblance of peace. But please, let's end our involvement in this. Our daughter and I have the right to protect ourselves from harm and to speak out against such actions. We are under no obligation to concede anything to those who hurt us. I will do everything in my power for our happiness, but without your genuine willingness to change, our daughter and I are left in solitude. Just as you continue to restrain yourself, twisting your will to meet your parents' expectations, if you wish to be a sincere husband and a true father, you must be willing to change and grow, no matter how difficult. Moved by my words, my husband began to cry. I'll settle things with my parents and come back for you and our daughter, no matter what. He vowed forcefully. Although resolving things with the in-laws won't be easy, I hope he fulfills his responsibility as a father and stands up bravely. This is my last compromise, and sometimes, when my head gets hot, I consider severing ties with him. However, from another perspective, my husband is also a victim suffering from the effects of his toxic parents. If he can awaken to his role as a father and act with awareness, that would be the most desirable solution. Yet, my resolve is firm. I will not tolerate disrespect towards me and my daughter, and I am ready to serve that bond.
If my husband succumbs to his parents' pressure, it signifies the end of our relationship, a fate I am prepared to accept. Given his current state, he would likely follow my words. But such a relationship is not what I desire. Without my husband being in a healthy state of mind, there's no meaning to our relationship, as the control simply shifts from his parents to me. A marriage life resembling puppets, only bringing mutual unhappiness, is something I wish to avoid. Ideally, I want my husband to stand up to his parents and grow into an independent individual, not because he is forced, but out of his own will. Some may say my wish is greedy, but for someone who has never rebelled, taking a significant stand requires immense courage. Without rushing or pressuring him, supporting him to change at his own pace may ultimately be the best path for us. I have chosen to quietly wait for the outcome. Since that incident, there has been no contact from the in-laws, creating an eerie silence. The content of the conversations exchanged between my husband and his parents, or even if there was any real dialogue, has not been disclosed. Daily, I receive emails from my husband detailing various mundane aspects of life. Heading to work. I'm home. Anything new with you? Currently preparing dinner. Just snippets of daily life. In a recent email, he asked. Do you have any wishes regarding our new home? I reply with non-committal content each time. Deep down, I'm eager to know more about the in-law's situation, but I refrain from stirring up unnecessary trouble, relying on my trust in my husband. About 30 years have passed, and the fact that we're still together shows we've somehow managed to overcome. Whether my husband is the best or not is hard to say, but since that incident, I've felt a reliable strength in him. He's shown a change that gives me hope he might have the strength to protect our family. Perhaps we were destined to walk this life together as a shared fate. Reflecting on it now, not impulsively severing our bond in a moment of anger was the right decision. Thanks to my husband properly resolving things with the in-laws, there has been no interference from them since. While I'm very curious about what transpired between my husband and his parents, I feel it's best not to pry and have stopped asking questions. I believe that facing the issue seriously at that time ultimately allowed us both to grow. Without that particular set of circumstances, we might not have been able to change. It may not suffice to simply call it a fate, but indeed, my husband showed great courage in preserving our bond. Years later, our son was born. There was a brief worry that the in-laws might interfere again, but fortunately, that never happened. As time passed, now our daughter and son have grown up independently and commendably. My husband and I are spending a quiet later life together. I feel this peaceful life is not a bad thing at all. Life comes in many forms, but I'm grateful for these tranquil days. Hey, Alex, it's about time we headed home. Look, the sun is about to set too, it's almost time for it to go home. I don't want to leave yet. I just want to watch the planes a little longer. Despite my attempts to persuade him, it was clear that it was entirely in vain. Just turned two, Alex, with his little hands, gripped the airport fence tightly, waving affectionately at countless airplanes. Worrying if we'd make it back in time for dinner, I ultimately decided to fulfill Alex's little wish. His eyes sparkled like stars, and his excited, chubby cheeks turned a lovely shade of red. For such innocent smiles, there's nothing a grandmother wouldn't do happily. That's the unchanging love a grandmother holds. This truth remains unchanged even as Alex grows taller than me. Now at 75, I enjoy a relatively calm retired life. My husband, George, also 75, spends his days enjoying chess with friends. We have a son Liam and a daughter Emma, both of whom have their own families now. Especially, our son's family includes Alex, now a college student. Our son moved a lot for work, 
and when Alex was little, they moved every few years. It was always hard to see Alex leaving friends behind, and I felt it was a significant burden for our son's wife, Linda. So, we welcomed them with open arms during holidays, happy to take care of Alex whenever asked. Holding Alex's small hand, walking through the supermarket, picking out ingredients for dinner, watching airplanes at the airport until dusk, and carrying his tired little body home were indeed demanding. But these moments spent together are cherished memories. Grandma, Grandma. He'd say, clinging to me, which made me incredibly happy. However, Linda, Alex's mom, was somewhat lacking in manners. Even after taking care of Alex during summer vacations or sending thoughtful gifts for his school entrance, her response was often just as simple. Ah, uh, yes. At first, it pained me deeply, and I thought about discussing it with my son. But I didn't want to criticize my son's wife, so I decided to keep it to myself. When Alex entered middle school, my son started living alone due to work. After that, Alex became busy with club activities and rarely came home. He hasn't visited us once since high school. Although it was lonely, hearing friends experiencing the same made me accept it as part of life. Then, one day, I unexpectedly received a call from Linda. It was rare for her to call, it's usually my son who contacts us. Worried something bad had happened to my son, I nervously answered the phone. Hello? We're short on money for Alex's college tuition. We need financial help. What did you say? Without even a greeting, she made her request directly. Quite the efficient way to start a conversation. But this isn't the time to be impressed. What does directly asking for money imply? When I first heard this, I thought it was a scam. However, Linda's name was clearly displayed on the phone display. Um, what's going on all of a sudden? Actually, Alex attempted the college entrance exams, and because the university he wishes to attend is far away, we have no choice but to let him live on his own. However, our household budget cannot afford this, so we're hoping you could contribute financially. Finally, I understood the situation. It seems they're asking for financial support for Alex's education. I understand that you're going through a lot of trouble with Alex's college admission. But bringing up finances all of a sudden. What? Why would you say that? It's for your beloved, adorable grandson, right? What? Don't you feel pain in your heart knowing your beloved, adorable grandson might not achieve his dream? Um. Alex is indeed a beloved and adorable grandson. I haven't seen him since he became a high school student, but I've always wished to support him in any way possible. However, using my grandson as a shield to ask for support feels somewhat uncomfortable. Have you discussed this with Liam properly? Is his income truly insufficient? You know Liam is on a work assignment alone, right? Knowing that, do you still ask such a question? Being apart doesn't mean you can't discuss these matters, right? Linda sighed deeply, as if dealing with an uncomprehending elder. But the one who really wants to sigh is me. Liam said he leaves all household and Alex matters to me, so don't worry. But that doesn't feel reassuring at all. Anyway, even if you say we should give you money right away, it's not that simple. I'll discuss it with George, so please wait a bit longer. Saying that, I hung up without waiting for Linda's reply. I've always felt she was too brazen, asking for support without regular contact, using Alex as a shield. Honestly, I strongly feel like refusing. But not providing support might disadvantage Alex. Whether we provide support or not, I have a bad feeling about the outcome and sighed deeply again. Eventually, we decided to support Alex's college education expenses. Although not fully agreeing with Linda's attitude, 
We want to support Alex's future. For us, Alex is a beloved grandson. When I told this to my son Liam, who is on a work assignment alone, his reply was as follows. Since I've left financial and educational matters to my wife, if she says there's a shortage, I'd like to ask for support. We'll repay it gradually. When Linda asked for support, she indeed said, please give us the money. Well, even if we think of it as a loan, if one day we suddenly pass away. We decided to invest $40,000 for our grandson's future as a pre-death gift. Though we received happy news that Alex was admitted to the university he wished for, the communication from my son's family ceased again shortly after. As December arrives, with the days getting shorter, the winter cold is quite severe for us elderly. On this particularly cold night, I took out a warm winter blanket from the back of the closet, which hadn't been used for a long time. I wonder if Alex is keeping warm in his place, living alone. You don't need to worry about that. Young people manage to live their lives joyfully, undisturbed by the cold. Right, that's true indeed. As the seasons change, my husband always comforts me with a warm gaze, easing my worries about Alex's safety and health. Hoping that maybe next New Year, Alex might come to visit, I was preparing for bed when an unexpected ding-dong of the doorbell rang. My husband and I looked at each other in surprise, and checked the clock, it was already past 10 p.m. Not expecting anyone this late, we were anxious, but decided to check who it was. Peeking through the intercom, there stood a grown-up Alex, looking utterly exhausted. Although we didn't know the reason for his sudden visit or how he got here, seeing my grandson so tired pained my heart. I first took him to the living room and had him sit inside the warm chair. Are you hungry? I asked, and he nodded slightly. I immediately warmed up some leftover bread and meat and potato stew, and also quickly prepared a simple soup. As Alex quietly savored his meal, he began to tear up, seemingly overwhelmed by emotion. It's so warm, truly warm from the heart. Alex. His teary-eyed eating reflected an innocence uncommon among modern youths. Observing him closely, despite the cold winter night, he was clearly underdressed, and his skin condition was not good. My husband and I were confused by Alex's unusual situation, but all we could do was quietly observe his mealtime. Alex, are you managing to eat properly every day? Do you have appropriate clothes? Alex quietly, but clearly shook his head no. It can't be helped. My family is financially struggling, and yet I wish to go to college. His resigned statement reminded me of the words Linda once let slip, there's no money at home. Doubts about whether Alex was really facing serious financial difficulties began to emerge. My son indeed has experienced frequent relocations, but on the other hand, he should be working for a company that provides a relatively stable income and benefits. Is your family's financial situation really that severe? Yes, it is. That's why I have to support myself. I manage to cover tuition with scholarships, but I have to pay for my living expenses and apartment rent with part-time work. And balancing work with my studies, I barely earn enough for rent and utilities. To be in such a situation, Actually, I got sick in November and could hardly go to my part-time job. As a result, by December, I had no income at all, couldn't pay my rent, and was desperate because I couldn't afford food. But when I was standing on the platform to go to my part-time job, I saw a familiar station name. That's it, the station, to the airport where I used to watch planes with grandma when I was little. That memory moved my heart, and the next moment, I jumped on that train. Alex. Seeing my grandson, who should have grown up, trembling like a little child wrapped in memories of his childhood, squeezed my heart. I'm really sorry, Grandma. I haven't come to see you for so long, and yet, when I'm in trouble, I just come to you. 
In front of Alex's tears, I gently hugged him and softly stroked his back to comfort him. What are you saying, that's perfectly fine. How happy it makes me that you rely on me during tough times. Grandma. That Alex came to rely on us was the greatest relief. The fact that we were the only ones who could recognize the abnormal situation Alex was facing might have been some kind of guidance. Alex, your mom said she was struggling financially and couldn't afford the tuition, but is that really true? Yeah, she said that, but... However, we heard that your mom was struggling with tuition, and we've already provided assistance for it. Really? At this sudden revelation, Alex's teary eyes widened even more in surprise. I can't believe it. It's not a lie, Alex. It's the truth. Alex looked at us steadily, and as I began to nod slowly, his face turned even paler. Why? How did this happen? We ourselves couldn't fully understand how this situation came about. But one fact was clear to us. The $40,000 we lovingly provided for our grandson's future had not reached Alex. There's a very high likelihood that this money was mishandled by my son's wife or my son himself. The act of a parent taking their child's property, for whatever reason, should never be allowed. If it's an injury to my beloved grandson, I can never forgive the perpetrator, even if it's his biological parent. Alex, leave everything to us from now on. We won't let you be placed in a more difficult situation, ever. My husband also nodded deeply to my angry declaration. Grandma. As he said this, more tears spilled from Alex's eyes. In front of my grandson's tears, my husband, trembling with anger, tried to contact my son's wife several times, but she didn't respond at all. Therefore, we decided to consult with our other child, our daughter Emma, about this situation. If they're not answering the phone, that's actually better for us. It's the perfect opportunity to visit directly and verify the facts. Hearing her words over the phone, I could almost see my daughter's triumphant smile. The next day, our daughter, my husband and I left Alex at home and went to the apartment where my son's wife had lived. She initially tried to completely ignore our visit, but after we kept ringing the intercom, she finally opened the door reluctantly. Seizing the opportunity, we forcefully entered the room. Wait, what's this? Why are you here all of a sudden? The moment my son's wife tried to resist our unexpected visit, I put my hands together in apology and quietly interrupted her. We apologize for the intrusion. We've tried to contact you numerous times, Linda, but unfortunately, we received no response, so we decided to visit directly. Actually, when Alex stopped by our house, we noticed he was shivering without enough winter clothes. So, I promised to come and get some clothes for him. What? Alex said that? The moment she heard Alex's name, a slight tremor appeared on my son's wife's face. Not missing that moment of weakness, Emma immediately stepped inside the room. Considering my father isn't getting any response either, it seems you really dislike my parents. Worried that a sudden visit might be a bother, I decided to come along. So, where is Alex's room? While saying this, the daughter started to boldly search the room, pretending to be considerate. Wait, don't go in there. That's where my personal items are stored. Oh, is that so? How interesting. This isn't the time to say it's a interesting. But Linda, you really do have a good sense of style. While saying this, she picked up a coat and inspected it closely. This coat, for example, has a really simple design but the quality of the material used is very good, and it's a timeless piece. Well, yes. Linda showed a hint of satisfaction at having her taste acknowledged. And this bag, with its glossiness and feel, is very lovely too. She showcased a shiny black bag she picked up, 
which indeed gave off an air of sophistication. Linda couldn't help but smile a little, pleased at being praised for her fashion sense. Yes, indeed. But it's not that expensive. Not that expensive? But isn't this item worth $5,000? What? What, $5,000? As my reaction grew, Linda inadvertently showed a look of regret. Seeing this, the daughter confidently resumed her search of the closet. This coat is even more expensive, isn't it? It wouldn't be less than $7,000? In Linda's view, is this also not considered an expensive item? Pressed by the daughter's questioning, Linda had no choice but to falter. The once confident face of my son's wife quickly changed color, clearly draining of blood due to the daughter's sharp inquiries. Emma was very skilled at reading the situation and controlling it. The reason for visiting my son's wife with the my daughter was to uncover the truth about her financial management. There was a possibility that my son was misusing the tuition funds, but since he left everything to his wife, it seemed more likely that the misuse involved the wife. Being knowledgeable about fashion, the daughter could discern the true value of expensive brands, securing concrete evidence. And indeed, our expectations were splendidly met. Ignoring the bewildered Linda, the daughter found and demonstrated the value of luxurious brand items one after another throughout the room. Even items that seemed modest at first glance were clearly luxurious to those who knew their quality and worth. A mother whose child lives in poverty shouldn't have a closet filled with such extravagances. Overall, I wonder how much all the items stored in this closet are worth. However, it seems I can't find any of Alex's clothes. Maybe they're in another room? Stop doing as you please. And that door leads to the bathroom. Look. This lotion is expensive, costing $1,000, right? And you're using the entire series, that's quite the luxury. No wonder your skin is so radiant. In contrast, Alex's skin was dry and rough, wasn't it? Hey, that's enough. Wow, from the shower head to the hairdryer, everything you use is high-end. This is truly a celebrity lifestyle. I'm so envious. To think my brother's income can afford such a wonderful life. Just wait a moment, please wait. But the daughter's relentless pursuit and insight did not stop. Seeing the wife of my son scratching her head in desperation, I decided to throw in a bit of sarcasm. Linda, from what I see, you seem to be living quite a luxurious life. Given that, it seems our financial support was entirely unnecessary, wasn't it? Well, that's, uh... But when you think about it, it's quite strange, isn't it? According to Alex, he covers his tuition with scholarships and earns his living expenses with part-time work. Despite your lavish lifestyle, how can that be? Linda? Um, well... Where did the $40,000 disappear to? Into that expensive coat, or perhaps these cosmetics? Linda was lost for words, her eyes darting around, opening and closing her mouth, desperately searching for an excuse. I've never indulged in harassing my daughter-in-law, but this pursuit of a daughter-in-law committing fraud was quite interesting. Of course, all of these actions were for the love of my grandson. Then, I noticed my husband quietly looking at me and signaling me over. Honey, it seems like there's more to this situation than meets the eye. What? At that moment, the color drained from my son's wife's face out of fear, distorting her expression more than any previous situation had. Before she could say anything to us, we passed her and proceeded into the living room, where my husband quickly opened the large curtains by the window. There stood a stranger on the balcony, exposed to the harsh cold, his lips turning purple and his body shivering. This person couldn't possibly be our son. If he were our son, there would be no reason for him to be outside like this. 
Oh, hello there. Linda, who might this gentleman be? Wait. That's not it. It's not like that. As a result of our surprise visit to the condo where my son's wife lived, her obsession with brand items and her affair were exposed to broad daylight. Both my son and grandson were almost completely unaware of the brand items she favored, which actually turned out to be luxury goods worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Moreover, it was revealed that she had been enjoying a quasi-cohabitation life with her lover, taking advantage of her husband and son's absence. The $40,000 we had given for Alex's future had all been spent on her brand purchases and luxurious life with her lover. We were faced with an unforgivable situation. Eventually, my son and Linda divorced. My son's wife lined up excuses like the loneliness was unbearable or the pressure of raising a child and household chores alone built up my stress, but no one sympathized with her reasons. As a result, my son's ex-wife was legally demanded to pay a huge sum of almost $100,000 in alimony for the expenses incurred by her luxury brand purchases and the affair. Even if she sold all the luxurious brand items she had collected, it was impossible to fully repay the debt, and the remaining debt had to be slowly repaid in monthly installments. Now at 45 years old, having spent most of her married life without working, finding stable employment will be an even more difficult challenge for her. She will no longer have the opportunity to acquire the brand products she once dearly loved, and will be forced into a long-term repayment life until around the age of 70. Meanwhile, her lover quickly left her side after paying the alimony. The ex-wife of my son now lives alone in a dilapidated apartment building that's 45 years old, leading a humble life. Unable to combat loneliness and financial hardship, she once went as far as to approach Alex at his university, attempting to contact him. However, Alex, fully aware of his mother's past actions, completely ignored her attempts and walked away. The ex-wife of my son was deeply shocked to be rejected by her child, something she had never anticipated. On the other hand, Alex's father, my son, deeply regretted his past actions, especially how his focus on work had burdened his family. He apologized to Alex and firmly promised to take full responsibility for his education and living expenses as a father from now on. While we can't change the family's past misfortunes, a commitment was made to positively reclaim those failures going forward. Three years have passed since then, during a summer. Grandma, I've finished all the mowing jobs. Thank you so much, Alex. Here, I've prepared some chilled tea and watermelon. Let's enjoy it together on the cool balcony. As Alex wiped off his sweat and sat down next to me on the veranda, I carefully placed the vibrant watermelon beside him. Watching him eagerly bite into the watermelon, I couldn't help but smile and joined him in enjoying the watermelon. After his parents' separation, Alex started visiting us regularly during his long university breaks. You don't need to go out of your way for us. But he would brightly respond. It's not like that. I want to come and see you guys." And he gladly took on the heavy lifting tasks that we couldn't handle ourselves. This warm-hearted Alex will soon start his new life as a working adult. Thanks to his father, my son, who continued to pay for his tuition and living expenses, Alex was able to lead a fulfilling university life and has landed a job in the profession he admired. The concerted effort of our family has borne fruit and it fills me with relief and joy. Make sure to spit out the watermelon seeds. You'll upset your stomach if you swallow them. Hey, Grandma. I'm an adult now, you don't have to worry about that. But no matter how old you get, you'll always be my precious grandson. That will never change. At this exchange, Alex sighed lightly but smiled happily. To me, as his grandmother, that smile is an irreplaceable treasure beyond anything else.